Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week, we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Ernie Satchel was born and raised in Bird's Nest, a tiny town on the lower eastern shore of Virginia. My brother and, and I, we built our own toys. I learned a lot from doing that. Uh, we had a lot of failures. We had, uh, had successes. But, uh, you know, I learned what would work and what wouldn't work. And uh, so I was good at configuring things. Uh, and I didn't realize how valuable it was until I got into sculpture and I was doing, uh, uh, making armatures and doing all kinds of things. And so uh, uh, you'd be surprised what you know that you are not aware that you know. And uh, this was prior to us having TV, and I used to collect comic books, so I started drawing, uh, doing drawings from comics, and I became pretty good at it. And when I went to high school, ninth grade biology, we had these um, drawings to do, amoeba, protozoa, and so forth. And um, so I started doing them, and I uh, was doing them in India Inc., and it got the attention of some of the teachers. Uh, my biology teacher, uh, liked them uh, so much that he gave me an entire bulletin board. And so fill the bulletin board out with uh, drawings. And I don't know how many, maybe 30 drawings. And so I was encouraged to pursue art. So I attended Northampton County High School. Uh, I grew up and I graduated in 59 and the school system was segregated then. So there was one high school for blacks in the entire county. And we did not have an art program until uh, about two years after I graduated. Ernie wanted to become an architect, in part because most of the men in his family were in the building business. At that time, the only school that was open to him to study architecture was a private college and too expensive. So Ernie did what he says was the next best thing, and that was to study art education at Maryland College, which is now the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. It was there that he fell in love with ceramics after being inspired by a visiting professor named Dr. Kenneth Beidel. After graduating from college, Ernie taught high school art for one year before enlisting in the Navy. When he got out, he had a job as an illustrator for the Boeing Aircraft Company. Jimmy Mosley, one of his professors at Maryland College, contacted him about a faculty position opening there. And so Ernie came home to the Eastern Shore and has been here ever since. I'm Dana Kester McCabe, and we're talking to sculptor Ernie Satchel. Once back at his alma mater, Ernie took up working in clay as his primary medium of expression. I started with the large uh, vessels, and when Dr. Beidel was, was here, uh, he taught, uh, taught us the, uh, the art of inverse uh, stacking. Uh, and what you would do is you throw two vessels as tall as you could, and you would keep the edges the same thickness. And then when they were stiff enough, you would flip them over and join the edges, score them and join the edges. And so you could get a pot that's twice as tall as you would normally throw. Even larger pots can be created when the vessels are made with coils of clay. Each coil is laid like a brick on top of the other while they are still pliable and are stretched to create vessels that are several feet tall. The largest Ernie can create is about 62 inches high because that is the limitation of the kiln he fires his work in. Ernie says when he is building the large urns, he likes creating long, elegant necks. Uh, I've always had an appreciation for, the, for, uh, for classical pottery. And uh, I like the smooth, uh, nice flowing lines. I like the S-curves and so forth. I like to see the rhythm in the pot. Uh, I tend not to do a lot of contemporary things that you know, I, I, I've never been a faddish person. After 39 years, Ernie is now retired from teaching, but he still maintains a studio at UMES. He's currently working on a series of bronze sculptures honoring the most venerated UMES presidents for a sculpture garden to be installed where the Mall of Flags is now. Ernie's dedication to this project, which will take a number of years to complete, is just one example of the passion he feels for his calling as an artist. When, when you work in art, it's just like dance. It looks so easy when you see someone do it. They, they go on stage and they stay on stage for a short period of time, a ballet dancer, and you say, oh gee, they make a lot of money for such a little 
uh, little, uh, such a small performance. And, um, but then you, you look back, how many years did it take them to get there? So it's that determination and drive, and that comes from a, a passion. You have to feel passionate about what you're doing. Um, if you feel passionate, you will do that regardless. You know, people that like to sing, um, even they, they might be doing uh, construction work, they will sing every opportunity they get. They'll sing in church, they'll sing in the groups, they'll sing any t opportunity they get, they will sing because they're driven to, to sing. And that's the way it is with, uh, with art. I always like doing things. I always challenge myself. If some, something didn't work, I wouldn't quit. I would just keep trying over and over again. Ernie's work can be seen on the campus of UMES in Princess Anne. While there, visit the Mosley Gallery, which always has wonderful faculty and student art, as well as prestigious guest exhibitors. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters EatDrinkByArt.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs> <laughs>